Oh, this is going to be good. It's like watching the elections. We are ready to call this one and stake a firm flag here. We've been studying the calendar for a while now, from the Books of Jubilees, Enoch, and the Dead Sea Scrolls, but wait a minute, not just there, comparing them with the modern canon of Scripture. Do they fit or don't they? And oh boy, this is monumental. Wait till you see this. What time does the Sabbath day begin? Let's just come out with it. Not Friday night. Ooh, sorry. We have always said all along, we were still researching that, and that we kept it on that time ourselves up until that day, until we felt we really prove it. These next videos will prove this out. The Bible lays this out in such clarity. By the end of even this first video, you are really going to wonder how this could even be misconstrued. What a mess we live in. But we are in the days of increasing knowledge. Amen? We are the God Culture, a group of independent researchers with no affiliation to any denomination nor organization whatsoever. We read the word and we test it. It's 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And man, it is good to be in his presence in all things. After this teaching, we will go back to the days of Moses. So that's coming, don't worry. And we will show you this is consistent in his days. And then we'll take you to the creation account and all match this teaching. What was the key? The key was the timing of the death and resurrection of Messiah. We have read so many commentaries on this where some have even attempted to say, well, it was actually four days, not three. Well, so their point, Messiah was either wrong in saying he would rise in three days and nights, or maybe the apostles recorded it wrong. That's their only point, and that can never be a point because when you say that, it means you don't believe Scripture. Neither were wrong. They are all right. He said he would be dead for three days and nights, and he was. Exactly. We will show you the calendar, the timing, and Scripture is so clear on this. You will be two from now on. Let's begin, though, with the moon. Because that's the calendar that we deal with today and what they call the modern Hebrew calendar. Number one, it is not Hebrew. Number two, it is most certainly not Yah's calendar, and we'll prove that in this video. Is the moon a measure for telling when the day begins in Scripture? Let's see. We're showing you an article from National Geographic, but this is very well documented in modern science, really general knowledge. The new moon comes in every 29 and a half days. Notice that is not 30 days, is it? No, 29 and a half. Does the Bible ever use the moon as the measure for the beginning of a month? Well, every time you see the word new month or words, you need to go to the Hebrew or the Greek and find out what it really is. Because the word used, we will cover, is not new moon in interpretation oftentimes. Fortunately, we have the book of Jubilees, which is the book of times and seasons, which has always documented the actual Hebrew calendar. Oh, better ban that one indeed. If you have not watched Testing the Book of Jubilees, we challenge you to do so even before watching this because this book vets as scripture, canon, inspired, found in the Torah, even in the library of John the Baptist and the Levites who are the keepers of scripture. Well documented. Jubilees tells us what calendar to keep and identifies the one which is pagan. You will find that is the one in modern Judaism, and it is from Babylon, not the Bible. Jubilee 6, 
for there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year ten days too soon. Hmm. This is right after Yahuwah warns the Israelites will be straying from his ways right after these generations. You mean Moses knew in 1700 BC or so that the new moon was set to come in 10 days too soon? Well, this is Yahuwah speaking to him, remember that. And yes, he most certainly knew. Let me show you how this works, and you'll see confirmation in the next verses. If the moon comes in as new every 29 and a half days, there's a big problem. As said, here it disturbs the actual calendar by 10 days, thus is no measure, cannot be used as a measure for days, nor weeks, nor months, nor years, period. That pretty much ends that. So therefore, the modern Ashkenazi calendar, already out, according to the Book of Jubilees, which is accurate. That doesn't mean it does not have a purpose, the moon that is, as there are feasts such as Passover and the Shabbat or Sabbath during the Day of Atonement. There's specific Sabbaths to begin with the moon in the evening. However, the seventh day Sabbath nor the routine day cannot be judged by the moon, nor the calendar, generally. We will prove this out. The Bible year is 12, 30-day months, which is 360 days. However, it has one day added per quarter, or four days, for 364. This passage is exact science, literally. In a 30-day month, you would lose a half a day every month if you follow the moon or six days per year. And then there are four once per quarter added, thus exactly 10 days too short. If you follow the moon, it does not fit a year, a week, a month, nor even a day. And we'll show you. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order. Again, this is talking about the years, but that affects the month, the day, and the whole calendar, really. And make an abominable day the day of testimony. Oops, you mean some of the feasts are wrong? Yes, we'll get there too in time. And an unclean day, a feast day, and they will confound all the days. All, that's what Yahuwah said to Moses, we were warned, the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths, weeks and feasts and jubilees. Oh boy, the whole thing went wrong. And we'll show you, it certainly did. But we will restore the day in these videos, and later we'll hopefully get to the rest of the calendar in time. For this reason I command and testify to thee, that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death thy children will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. Scripture tells us how many days the year is. It's right there. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths, weeks and festivals. And they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. All have come true. See, the year is the beginning of this misleading away from Yahuwah's calendar. Does it matter to him? Yes, it does. He just said so. So again, a year is not 365 days in which Jubilees even warned they will add to it. They did. They added an extra day and then did all kinds of other things to manipulate it, including changing when the day begins, which we'll address in this video. 
Now, someone's thinking, yeah, but it's only one day. I mean, what's the big deal? Oh, no, it's much worse. Here is a sample month of a calendar from our friends over at Zadok Way. They have several YouTube videos on the calendar topic. Check them out. They're worth reviewing. Also, they provide a PDF calendar for download at the below link to their website. They do a good job with it, so feel free to check that out. Someday we will release a calendar in time, but this one is not bad. It's very good. This is laid out from Jubilees, supported by the Book of Enoch, and this is what the Levite priests, the keepers of Scripture and the calendar, observed in Qumran, where we found their Bible. Yes, we did. Their history, their calendar, their community writings were all found with it. Again, 12 30-day months with an extra day added at the end of each quarter for a total of 364 days. This calendar, by the way, ties every year and requires no leap years, etc. to reconcile it. Essentially, the same feast day, if on a Thursday, is on the same Thursday every year. This is far simpler than this Roman calendar we have today. Some call this a solar calendar. Let's address that. Let us not confuse this into such a category as the Egyptians followed a pagan sun calendar of 365 days. They say as early as 4000 BC or so. If that is the case, then so be it. But that has nothing to do with this. Jubilees is rebuking that calendar as well. Those claiming the Bible calendar is lunar, we will demonstrate, are taking scripture out of context, such as a couple of feasts, which are evening events, as I said, Passover, also the Day of Atonement, has a Sabbath that begins in the evening. There's nothing wrong with that, but that doesn't change the seventh-day Sabbath all of a sudden, because that one begins in the evening. You have to read things in context. Do not rely on the moon for Sabbaths and for really the calendar generally, though it is to be used in some segments, and there are some. Then there's the whole moon and month, which are royally confused by translators, whether malintent or not. The nine times or so, the KJV, for instance, uses a particular word they translate as new moon, we will cover. That word is not new moon all nine times, pretty much. We will cover that in one of the next videos. In this video, we will see the New Testament defines the Hebrew Sabbath day, beginning not at sundown, not by the moon, which we have observed ourselves for years that way, uh, because that's what we've been taught, as most of us have, but instead at sunrise. Hmm, what? It's right there. And then in the next video, we will show you, again, it was the same in the time of Moses. And then after that, we'll go back to the creation time clock as well. Neither propagate a lunar calendar, which is very certain. And they cannot, according to Jubilees, which just said, that is the pagan calendar. That's the one from Babylon. Now, let me address this very clearly. Judaism is a Babylonian religion not the relationship defined in Scripture ever. In Mark 7, Messiah rebukes Phariseeism as against his commandments, and even the Jewish Encyclopedia defines Judaism as the continuation of Phariseeism without the second temple rituals. Well, there's no temple there, so that's obvious, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. Yeah, leavened a whole lot over the 2,000 years, we would agree. But it is not the biblical relationship. It is against his commandments, according to Mark 7, and they render his word of none effect, Messiah says. Now let's go to the resurrection. And this will clarify the whole timeline for everything, because Messiah did not rise on Sunday. No, it was still Saturday, according to the biblical time clock, and it was still the Sabbath, just as Scripture tells us it had to be. 
So any church claiming to move the Sabbath to Sunday better be meeting before 6 a.m. in order to make such claim. So because that is Saturday and the Sabbath, not Sunday. So that's still on his clock when he rose on the Sabbath. Again, we have no issues with churches meeting on Sunday because you can go to church any day. There's no problem with that. However, you observe the Sabbath one day a week. You don't do it every day. We've had have people say that all the time. Oh, I observe the Sabbath every day. No, you don't. And if you do, the Bible calls you lazy because you are to work. You are just not to work on the Sabbath. There's one day a week that is set aside as the Sabbath, the seventh day and no other. So, the moon is not the measure of a day, but it disrupts the true calendar of Yahuwah. So, what is then? Now, we search the Gospels in the next video, and we will find it, guaranteed. This is a good stopping point. Wait till you see that Messiah's calendar and his Sabbath are preserved in his death and resurrection. Thank you for watching our Sabbath series. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. Over 250 videos now for you to test, many available in English and Tagalog. Like us on Facebook at The God Culture Space hyphen space original. Share this video with others and check out our website at thegodculture.com. Always remember to prove all things for yourself. We love you all. Yahuwah bless and Shabbat Shalom or Sabbath peace if you are watching this on Sabbath. Stay safe and Yah bless to all.